This is a YouTube optimization tool I just built for the public. I've been using it for months now, but what it does is it takes your target demographic that you give it and the transcript of your video, and then it returns options for headlines, a detailed description optimized for YouTube, SEO keywords for your YouTube video, chapter time codes, and even thumbnail prompts, which you can generate concepts of right there. Now, this tool started off as a very simple N8N workflow, but in order to make it public, it turned into something far more complex that I wasn't ready for. So in this video, I want to show you how I created the Bspot app, which is my first micro SaaS business, actually, that I'm going to launch pretty soon. So here's a sneak peek behind the scenes look at how I built this. Now, I'm a non-coder. I tried learning coding when I was a teenager. I just didn't have the patience for it. Then I learned how to hire freelancers, and I kind of learned things here and there about how software development works. Now that vibe coding is a thing, I'm vibe coding my ass off, creating as many little apps as I can just to learn. So as I walk you through how the Bspot app's infrastructure works, keep that in mind that anyone can learn to do this. You don't have to be a coder. Okay, so here was the original N8N workflow. If you're not familiar with N8N, it's automation software similar to Make.com or Zapier, except I think it's much more powerful, not to mention you can self-host it on your own domain, so you know it's not going anywhere, even though it's not fully open source. So let's take a look at the workflow. When the chat message is received with my transcript, then it's gonna run through a code node to format it, get it ready for an AI agent, which then uses OpenAI, I think it's GPT-41 Mini, to follow the system prompt I've given it, We'll go into it in just a second. And then it spits out all the metadata for the YouTube video, formats it as Markdown, and then it emails me. So here we go, video description. Are you tired of AI chatbots that sugarcoat your problems? Blah, blah, blah. We got what you'll learn. We got keywords. We got chapter timestamps. We got video headline options and thumbnail prompt options. And I normally mess around with the ones I like. I do it on Canva. Sometimes I even just generate them with AI image generators and they do great. So this is what I've been doing for six months, but the truth is the interface could be better. And I know many people would find value in this, especially early beginner YouTubers like I am. There's a lot of complex tools out there for YouTubers to analyze data, but if you're just getting started, you just want a way to save time so you can make more content. And that's what this workflow was designed to do. So what's really neat about this N8N workflow is there's no interface, but what you see here on N8N. I click open chat. And I literally say this video is for online builders ages 25 to 45 who want to start a business, right? And then I click the paperclip icon to attach a transcript. And then I press submit and see how it's running through this here. It's now processing through the AI agent node. I'll show you this real quick. What this does is it just separates the transcript file from this, the text, the video is for online builders at 25. So that way, when the AI agent node takes it, which it looks like the code node just had a problem, I may have messed things up turning it into an app, but basically the prompt for the AI agent says, write for this audience or niche and target keywords. And that's the chat input. And then here's the transcript. So we lost the audience niche here somehow. Fortunately, it doesn't really matter to me anymore because I'm using it on the Beastbot app. But then it goes through that. Then it formats the output into HTML, because normally AI LLMs, they output their data in Markdown, which is great for many cases, but we need it as HTML. And then later in the complex app, we actually structure it as JSON, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then it just emails me using Mailgun. And then I get the email. New email, there it is. Unlock the true power of AI powered coding with this beginner friendly guide to cursor wins. There it goes. We got everything there and it's all from the transcript. And I just took the transcript and I popped it in. So this is a pretty simple workflow, but very effective, right? This is what N8N is awesome for. And I do have a beginner to N8N video on my channel. You can find it and learn how to set up your own N8N instance and get basic workflows going. Believe me, it'll change your life. So initially I used Claude code to say, hey, let's turn this into an app. So I'd like to show you the whole conversation, but it's not loading. But basically I said, I have this great NNN workflow that emails me AI generated YouTube metadata, and I want to make it a site. I want to make an interface that people can use. And then I worked through it with Claude code. We came up with a whole plan here and made to do lists. And I used Claude code agents to do this. And we just kept going, 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 going until finally we got this and this basic interface. So I'll show you again, if I say the same thing, tech savvy computer users who want to start a business, and then I'll upload a transcript. 
we'll generate that metadata. And if we look here in the console, you'll see it's uploading transcript to blob storage, generating metadata from blob URL, and then it's waiting for the edit and workflow to complete. Now I'm obviously gonna change this stuff when, um, when we go live, but I just wanna show you the console for now. And if we go over here to the main workflow, we'll see in executions, it's running, boom, it succeeded. We come back here and now you see in the console, we have all the results in JSON format that is then parsed by this Next.js app to display all my metadata. So look, how to vibe code like a pro with cursor AI, no coding required. That may have been the one I used actually. <laughs> uh, how to stop using VO and Bolt, right? So, and then I can copy one, I can copy all of them. Then there's a cool description. Then there's SEO keywords, which this is not actual data oriented SEO keywords, but I'll tell you what, if you've never made YouTube videos before, it's so annoying finding the right keywords. And this is a great start point. So obviously, if you really want to be data oriented, you can get better SEO keywords, but these are pretty good. Here's the chapter timestamps. I can just copy all that, paste it in below the description. And then here's the funnest part, thumbnail concepts. I let AI build my app, generate thumbnail, YouTube thumbnail style, close up of cursor AI interface with glowing green code changes, split screen showing AI agent on right. So Obviously, this is just an idea inspiration. I'm not a faceless YouTube channel, so that's not ideal for my channel, but I could take this paste it here on Canva, and then put this little image of me over, over the finger, and boom, we got a thumbnail, right? Thumbnails are a whole thing. And truthfully, to do it right, you wanna hire a designer, but these are a great starting point if you're a beginner YouTuber. So there's another one, this AI, iDev changed everything. So this one's not great. NPM run dev is the text overlay. Yeah, so we have a little bit of a processing error there, but it's okay. I mean, here's another one, the secret prompt that stops AI from breaking code. And there's another one. So they're really not bad. And these are all generated by open source models. Even all this, the headlines, descriptions, I'm not using OpenAI. I am not using Anthropic. I'm using Venice AI API. And what is really cool about Venice AI, well, there's a lot of things, but not only do they have plenty of different models for reasoning, for vision, for function calling, etc. They also have image models and they're really good models. But even cooler than that is their API, the way it works. If you stake their DM token, it's a tokenized compute unit on the blockchain. So you stake it. For example, I have 10 staked here and every day I get $10 worth of API credit and it resets every day and I don't have to keep paying for it. So these results are good. I've used Anthropic and OpenAI and I get the same results using Venice models and I can generate images here. And as a micro SaaS owner, I don't have to pay every day for the compute units that users use. Pretty awesome. So this is the NNN workflow, but real quick, I use Clerk for authentication. They take care of all your user management so you don't have to build authentication into your app. So when you do all this, it's just using Clerk and you can see this is still in development mode. That has been a godsend. And I highly recommend that too for MVPs. I'm using a Neon database, Neon DB, I guess it's called. It's a very simple database that's only used to make sure that your metadata that you submit is linked to your user account so it still shows up. And one day, I do want to have like a history tab so you can see the different ones you've generated. And then meanwhile, it stores the images and the transcripts as Netlify blobs, which doesn't cost any extra if you're using Netlify. So it's like, I'm still, I'm still trying to understand it, but it allows developers to store and retrieve unstructured data such as blobs, files, or JSON and spilt natively into Netlify composable web platform. It's zero configuration. And believe me, Claude Code set this up easily. It was no problem. I didn't have to use a bucket on stupid base or AWS or DigitalOcean space. It just went straight to Netlify. And the great part is the images and even all the data is meant to be like fleeting. Like I said, with NeonDB, we'll keep this stuff in here for users, but these thumbnail images, they can disappear. It's fine. This map isn't meant to save your thumbnail concepts. It's just meant to give you inspiration because if you're trying to take YouTube seriously, you probably don't want to use AI generated thumbs for YouTube channel. So Netlify blobs are really cool too. This is the first time I've used them. And now finally, we'll hop into the NADN workflow. So we got the webhook trigger. This is basically how the app, the Next.js app communicates, like saying, hey, someone just submitted a transcript and a demographic. Let's do it. Let's get this thing started. So it processes the webhook payload. If there's an error, it sends that. Then if it's a blob, it goes through this route. 
then it sends a request to Netlify to get the blob content, merges it, and then it comes back onto the path, which takes us to the AI agent. If there's no blob, for example, if you just submitted text here and it wasn't too big, then it doesn't need to make a blob and it just goes straight here. And then it goes to the AI agent and this is the fun part. Here's where we get the audience niche and the chat input and here's the transcript. Now, the prompt alone isn't going to do anything. We need a system message to say, hey, anytime you get a message, here's what you do. So I'll expand this. You're an expert YouTube content strategist that excels in video packaging for certain audiences. As a copywriter, you specialize in creating click-worthy content. Your task is to analyze video transcripts and generate compelling YouTube titles, descriptions, thumbnail ideas, SEO keyword, blah, 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 blah. And then it goes, core objectives. Create titles that balance curiosity, emotion, and value proposition, right? Descriptions that clearly communicate the learning outcomes. Now, this system prompt is mainly meant for educational videos. So I still have to update this with like maybe a checkbox, right? Is this an educational, entertainment, you know, what is the video? Educational videos are more meant to be evergreen, SEO, meaning they can stay there for years and they won't just like disappear. Like a trending video is gonna disappear. This is meant for people that are in it for the long haul, like myself, people that are trying to educate. Core objectives, analysis guidelines, identify the core value proposition of the content, what's the main takeaway, who's the target audience, extract key moments. And then we say, okay, here are the requirements for what you're gonna output back to the next JS app. Video description, 150 to 300 words with a hook and an intro. Description formatting requirements, use double line breaks to separate major sections. Video headlines, minimum 10. Curiosity driven, emotion based, achievement focused, problem solution oriented, urgency trending. Title optimization rules, keep it between 40 and 70 characters, use power words, and they all work. Now one day if this like takes off, I wanna make it where you can like tune it, say this is my audience, These are the, this is the kind of style I want you to use because it works for my channel. And like I mentioned earlier, there are more advanced data driven YouTube tools that do that, but they're just not very beginner friendly. Chapter timestamps, SEO keywords, AI generated thumbnails, Nail prompts, prompt structure guidelines, prominent text overlay, include the lighting, mention the composition, emotional cues, critical output format. You must respond with valid JSON in this structure. Now, this is something that threw me for a loop as I was building this, is I was still trying to output with Markdown and the app just couldn't do it. Like it couldn't put things where they needed to go. And the minute I told Claude Code, hey, why are we not just outputting with JSON? And Claude Code said, that is brilliant. And it wasn't just being sycophantic. It was a brilliant idea, even though it should have been how we were doing it from the beginning. But then it outputs everything as a valid JSON. And like we saw in the console here, this is the JSON that gets sent back to the app via this final webhook. Okay, so we send a request back to the site after structuring everything in the proper JSON, preparing it the right way, and then it sends it back. So that is essentially the app here. I decided to use an NNN workflow just because that was easier for me. Now, in the future, do I want to actually code this all as a Next.js app? Maybe. But here for the MVP, I wanted to just keep it simple. Like I said, I thought we were going to be able to use this and then just change that node, change that node instead of using this interface, you know, webhook instead of using that one webhook response and then done. But instead it turned into this beast, no pun intended, and here we are. So that's it, that's the beast bot. Meanwhile, I had to make an actual little logo thing, which looks pixelated for some reason. I'm gonna have to fix that. And I did that on Venice too, okay? Modern contemporary logo icon for B-Spot. And then I came up with that. And then what's cool is you can do this image editing feature. And so I was able to remove the text. I, I tried changing the colors, remove the text. And then I actually took it into Photoshop to fix the centering of it. And then boom, we have an icon. And now the final step, which I'm still working on now, and I'm actually recording this video because I ran out of cloud code usage. But now that all that's built, I'm like, okay, how am I going to market this? Who is this for? So I said, let's create a new directory and using the market researcher, research analyst, search specialist, knowledge synthesizer, and business analyst sub agents operated by the multi-agent coordinator agent. Let's research competitors and find our market fit for this app. And this was insane, okay? This was like one of my favorite things I've ever done. It took the multi-agent coordinator to orchestrate a comprehensive YouTube tools market research operation. And it made a plan. I approved the plan, phase one, make the directory, make folders, market analysis, competitive intelligence, user research, positioning, the synthesis, phase two, market intelligence gathering, phase three, strategic analysis and positioning, phase four, deliverables, and then it, look at all these agents it called. 
Now, I didn't do it in tandem like I wanted. I'm still working on that. But it first deployed the market researcher to analyze the market, competitive analysis to and analyze the competition in the market, search specialists to gather insights, analyze it all with strategic positioning, and then use knowledge synthesizer to synthesize all market research findings, and then a research analyst to generate an executive market research report. <laughs> and then it came back and said, okay, here we go. And that took like over an hour. I left, okay, and it just did it on its own. Used MCP servers, all this stuff. By the way, in a, I think my last video, Claude Code Agents Tutorial, I highly recommend it. There's also a link below to get your computer set up for vibe coding if you're a beginner and i have links to finding all the best sub agents okay so there's a bunch of resources in there there's also the ai captain school real quick guys if you're not a coder but you're learning to vibe code because you know it's possible and anyone can do this now i made the ai captain school for you in here are some very important courses not just for learning to scrape data start making n8n workflows build directories, process data, et cetera, but a basic framework on conversation-driven development, over 25 videos in here, how to prompt, the four-phase approach, how to create a PRD and build your first app, and most importantly, the architectural literacy crash course, which every non-coder needs. It's what you miss not going to coding school. Another 25 video lessons here, how to use the command line, how to recognize patterns in code without knowing code, how to use APIs, how to call them, how to understand them, how to use Use Git to save progress in your project, collaborate with others, and not lose anything important while you're experimenting with new features, and learn how dependencies work. This is all stuff that vibe coding won't teach you, but it's critical to have an understanding of these fundamentals so you can build successfully. And not only are all these courses, but we also have coffee hour workshops every week where you can join us for little micro workshops where we talk about what we're working on and what we're learning. It's a lot of fun. It's a cool community. Bring your questions, bring your projects. So click the link below and you can get started super easy. I hope to see you there. Anyway, so then we got the whole thing. It made a whole brand directory here and it has reports, okay? of competitor intelligence, YouTube tools, strategic business, synthesis, all this crazy stuff. Finally, I said, clean it up for me so I can understand it better, right? I made a plan to make a static site out of this information. Wow, it's 1,500 pages, apparently, in 11 reports. And it's even got, like, investor stuff in there. So this will actually be really cool. Technology stack. Okay, so I made a really great plan. Yes, let's do it, Claude Code. Okay, so stick around with me and let's see what happens. Boom, baby. <laughs> so this is what I would show an investor, right? AI native YouTube authorization for beginner. Search market opportunity. Dude, 24.7, wow. So this was definitely very positive and I didn't tell it to be critical at all and probably should have done that, but it's okay because it's a valuable tool for me and I know it will be for others. Competitive analysis. Yeah, 750. That's kind of what I was thinking. Holy sh. TubeBuddy. Yeah, I've tried TubeBuddy before. I didn't really like it. Overwhelming for beginners. Yeah, that's exactly why I didn't like it. VidIQ I use now and I love it, but uh, it's complex. It, that's just all it is. And it doesn't do these things. I'll show you. Yeah, so VidIQ, it doesn't help me just make descriptions. It can help you like get ready for your video and I can even make thumbnails with my face, which is cool, which sometimes I use, but I still don't even really normally use those. This is just like a lot of analysis and it's a lot. It's like feature bloat, I think I called it. So yeah, it's not for beginners. So basically what we're looking at, BeastBot is for beginners and that's why it's gonna be cheap and easy. Seven bucks a month, sounds about right. $12 a month target. Yeah, because if you're not making money from YouTube, why would you pay a bunch of money for it, right? But it literally is well worth $7 a month in the time it saves. Threats. Oh, good. We do have some SWOT analysis. VidIQ could, yeah, they could just, yeah, probably. YouTube Studio AI. Yeah, so whatever. This is, once again, I just vibe code to learn. This isn't my main thing. Like, my main app I've got, got in the works, like, that no one else is doing. But this was just, like, a really good project. It's obviously, up. Oh, we got a 404 Claude code phase one and obviously this was just an easy this whole this whole thing was like super easy to make along with it so why not it made a good video so there you have it my friends how to use ai to make a basic but functional and valuable startup and do the market research about it i hope this was inspiring i hope it gave you some ideas subscribe if you want to see more creative use cases and ways to use cloud code and it end things like that and let me know in the comments what are you working on what do you think of this would you use it are you making youtube videos how would you make it better see you in the next video